Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in Joshua. We're going to be starting chapter 6 this lesson. But before we begin, our theme verse for Lunch of the Lord is Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, in verses 1 through 27 of Joshua chapter 6, we're dealing with the fall of Jericho. Now, as you will see in this chapter, Jericho is a type of an unrepentant sinner. Now, I chose this name uh, for this chapter, the fall of Jericho, because the inevitable result of the life of an unrepentant person is that it ends in destruction. It's actually utter destruction. As I said a number of lessons ago, if any of the nations had sent to Joshua an embassy of people saying that they give up their idol worship and their gross sins and will worship the God of Israel and will serve the Israelites, then I believe that God would have saved them like he, like he saved the, the Ninevites. I believe God would have spared those people and the city. But the stubborn, sinful, unbroken heart will fight God unto the death. And this is, this is what we're going to see here in this chapter. The stubborn, uh, unrepentant, sinful heart that fights God tooth and nail to the end. Now, the first thing we need to understand about this city of Jericho is that in verse 17 of, you know what, let's read verse 17. Chapter 6, verse 17. This is after they're defeated. Uh, Joshua says, And the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, unto the Lord only. Ray, only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that were sent. So in verse 17 here, Joshua pronounces a curse upon the city. <laughs> but listen, listen, this is interesting. But Joshua's curse of the city was only a recursing of what God had already cursed. How do you know that? Turn to Exodus 23. Exodus 23, we're going to read verses 27 and 28. And it says here, God says, I will send my fear before you and will destroy all the people to whom you shall come. And I will make all your enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before you which shall drive out the Hivites, the, the Canaanite, the Hittite from before thee. Now, this approximately 40 years before the fall of Jericho, God had already cursed the city. Yep, 40 years before the, the city was even, was even attacked, God had already cursed the city of Jericho. The cursing, listen, the cursing of mankind upon the earth took place before God created anything when he knew that man would fall. This is why in the mind and in the heart of God, Jesus was slain from the foundation of the, of the world in Revelation 13 verse 8. Mankind was cursed long before we knew it. Mankind was cursed long before we even, before we knew we were cursed. Before the children of Israel crossed over the Jordan River uh, unto Gilgal, while the people, listen, while the people of Jericho were working and laughing and marrying and eating with pleasure, their destruction was already fixed by God. 
while they were secure in while they were secure in their hearts of their power and of their strength yet their end was already determined by God it was already determined they didn't even know it they were they were cursed by God their destruction was already determined by God 40 years before and they knew nothing about it but this is just like every unrepentant sinner who trusts in themselves and they care nothing about God. Their end was determined in eternity past and they bear their curse every single day of their life. The only possible way out from under the curse is to surrender to the one who pronounced the curse. That's it. The only way out of, of, of the curse upon mankind is to surrender and to give their, give their hearts to the one who pronounced that curse. Now, let's read verse 1. And it says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up before, because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Ha, ha, ha. They were, they, ha, they closed up everything. I mean, probably not even a mouse could get into that, that city. This verse describes the utter stubbornness and selfishness of the unrepentant heart. Their heart is shut up. They will not let anything go out or go into their heart. To reach, to reach out to an unrepentant God. They, they're not going to let anything go out of their, of their heart to reach out to an unre, to, to reach out to, a, uh, in repentance to God. And they, and they will not let anything in from God also. They're not going to make an, they're not going to make an effort to go to God and they're not going to receive anything from God. Why do you, listen, why do you think Listen, before we got saved, were we listening to, to, to preachers and were we listening to people that would uh, preach the gospel to us or tell us the gospel at work or what? No, we weren't letting anything in. And we, we, and we had no intention of, of, of go making an effort to inquire about the things of God either. As the end draws near, Instead of seeking peace with God, they close up ranks and they shut themselves in even tighter. This is, listen, this is the ultimate of a hardened heart. They shut themselves in to their own sins and self-righteousness. Oh, Jericho, Jericho is a, a, it's a, it's an exact picture of a hardened heart, of an unsaved, unrepentant, hardened heart. Verse 2, it says, And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into your hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. God declares that he only is in control of the end of the unrepentant heart. Jericho represents the unrepentant heart and the king of and the king of this heart is Satan. Satan rules this this hard heart right up to the time of its destruction. Jesus said listen Jesus said to the religious leaders that their father was the devil and the devil's works they will do in John four, John chapter eight, verse forty-four. Jesus said, "You are of your father, the devil." He calls them. He calls them out. Calls out the religious leaders. He said, "God's not your father. Satan is your father." And in this unrepentant, hardened heart, they have mighty men of valor to protect it. These mighty men are the things that they trust in. They're things that they live for. It's their job, their family, 
their possessions. They defend themselves by trusting in man's view of the world or of life or of our existence and our destiny. But the defeat of the city, I'm sorry, but but the defeat of, of the city and its king and all those mighty men that they trust in is soon coming. They cannot stand before the creator of all things. They can't do it. Why? Because God's declared it already. These people, they shut themselves in behind the walls uh, of their fault security, the things they desire, the things they, they trust in, their 401k, their job, their family, their whatever. They, they shut themselves in, but God says it, 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 it's coming down. It's coming down. And we're going to uh, continue on in verse 3 next lesson. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.